So let's start talking about lists. I've gone into the visualizer and I've created a short program that has a list in it. And that's on line one. We, the people of three states, and then there's this strange thing with parentheses. We're going to get back to it later, but I thought I'd throw one in to show you that you can store other things in lists besides just strings or numbers. In fact, the fact that I've put three in the list intermixed with a bunch of strings is oh, the first important thing we're going to take a look at. It. First of all, we have strings with double quotes. In Python, single quotes do exactly the same thing. They create a string. Three doesn't have quotes around it, so it's a number, in this case an integer type number. That means it doesn't have a decimal. It can't have a fractional component. And then there's this strange thing with round parentheses that we're going to see is called a tuple. And it's important to note that lists have square brackets surrounding them, and tuples have round brackets. We'll get back to tuples a little bit later. But let's go run this and see what we can discern from visual, the visualizer. The first thing we want to do with um, a list is we want to get some idea that, yes, the list has locations in it. And those locations, you notice, start with zero. They don't start with the way we usually do it, one. They start with zero. So on line three, when we print out lists of zero, we're expecting to see we. Now, each one of the locations in a list has a, has a position, and we can print stuff out. So let's print that one out, and we get what we expect, which is we. Now, we can print other things out. Now, the list also has a number in it, 3, at location 4. So the visualizer gets us some idea. Now, when I think about a list, I think about something where I have some ordered data. And I don't necessarily think about it all being the same. I've just got some data, and it's in some kind of an order. Now, tuples also have subscripts, but we're going to work on the list first. Now, lists have the property that you can update the stuff inside there. So I'm going to change sub 4, which is currently 3, to these. Okay, so we see that our list has updated, and now there's a these states. So we can change stuff in lists, and we can access individual pieces of lists. Now, if we can access individual pieces and we just want to work on them one at a time, we could just go through them one by one by one and go through it and work on them. But collectively, the list itself has some capabilities. Now, we could reorganize the order in which things are in the list. For instance, we could move states from where it is at position 5 over to position 6. Now, here's a really funny thing. When I do this next one at line 9 in here, and I do list of 1 sub 6 equals 5, it's not just going to move it, it's going to leave the original there. So I'm going to do that, and now suddenly we have states in two different locations. We've copied it from 5 to 6. And then if I want to put in something else in 5, for instance, I can put in a string united, and I can capitalize the first letter with the title function, we can do united, and then the next one we can put in capitalization of states. Now, notice this funny thing. I did list sub 6 equals list sub 6 dot title. So you can actually take stuff out of the list at position 6, apply a function to it, and then put it back into the list. So this is how you access into the list. And this is what we see in chapter 3 in the book, is we're going to poke into the list. Now, we're going to take a look at some other list operations here. Like, if I've got a list, can I make it longer? Can I take things out? Can I throw things away Okay, that I don't want to have? But how do I manipulate a list of things? You'll also notice that when I did list sub 6, um, that my, or I think I did list sub 5 is united, and my tuple disappeared. It just went away gone. Now, whenever something is gone, you always have to wonder, is it really gone, and where did it go? Because inside the computer memory, it's probably still there. And there is a process that the computer goes through where it says, well, nobody is using this thing anymore. I'll go collect it and reclaim the storage. But that doesn't happen right away. That may happen much later. And that process is called garbage collection. It takes out the trash. And sometimes that's an expensive and important process if you're trying to make a reliable program. So 
yeah, when things go away, are they really gone, or did they just, like, get hidden from view and nothing's pointing at them anymore? Those are important things to know.